time allocated for the today's Dhamma talk. To start the Dhamma talk, everyone may consider it three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasse. Namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasse. Namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasse. Evame tangapati, evame tangapati. Atro hang hapati kayo and buto parionato, yo igapati, imang kayang pariharanto, mutampiaro, yang patijani, kiman yatra bal yang, tasma, yeti kapati, even kitabang. Atro kayo me sato, chitang anato, bavisati, even hiti kapati, sit kitabang, piti. Dear yeah, Dhamma friends, for the for this retreat, each day we'll be allocating somewhere around one and a half, one to one and a half hours for the Dhamma talk. I would like to uh, deliver a Dhamma talk each day in a series based upon one particular discourse uh, that I have selected for this retreat. And namely Nakula Pitu Sutta. In the Epitaka or Three Baskets of the Buddha, you find this in the Sutta Pitaka, in the discourses known as Samyutta Nikaya, or concise discourses, particularly Khandavagga, and uh, we have a very starting Sutta of the Khandavagga, that is of the, the aggregates. But there is a little event or a, a background for this uh, sutta to come into being. During the time of the Buddha, there had been a very old couple known as Nakula Mata and Nakula Pita. They were very friendly with the Buddha and very devoted, open uh, pay visits and uh, get instruction from the Buddha. <coughs> but gradually, <coughs> Both of them became very, very old and therefore had no chance to meet the Buddha for a long time. But anyway, with all the sicknesses and the difficulties, one day that uh, the father, Nakula Pita, gave a visit to the Buddha and he reports his difficulties. He says that day, day by day I become sick. So therefore, find very difficult to come and pay respect to you, discuss with you, that I love you, I really remember, but therefore, uh, due to the sicknesses, I find very difficult to come and pay respect. So today, some of the other I came with this uh, bodily difficulties. Then the Buddha uh, confirmed affirmation. He says, uh, so it is, household, eh? so it is. He says that this is the way, this is the way uh, in our life. And he says the our body is, uh, it is obvious in your body specifically, is afflicted by uh, the weight and maybe bent down. And these are the natural symptoms of the old age. And uh, the then Buddha make a very good remark. Having such a uh, body afflicted by diseases and pain with the weight and uh, difficult to straighten up, having such a body, if someone says, someone thinks, even for a split second, I am a healthy person, it is uh, what is it is otherwise, uh, what is it is other than this uh, foolishness. This whole life of our body, or this uh, human life, that not a single second or a thought moment that we can claim healthy. And uh, if we are thinking like that, Buddha claim, Buddha declared uh, to this Nakulapitu, that father, that it is due to his son or uh, due to foolishness. And after making this statement, the Buddha asked him, the particular the householder being so uh, you must 
discipline yourself during your life in order to even though you are bound to have this kind of a body of sickness you must keep the mind free of sicknesses and healthy and uh, it's a kind of a pacifier pacifying of that old person and in this case you must train yourself to even the body is sick and it is difficult to straighten and is very heavy bent your mind must be very young and very again he was very happy that uh, buddha has given such a consideration pay respect and go to venerable sariputta one of the very senior disciples of the buddha and first he paid respect to the venerable sariputta maha sariputta and then narrate the situation till in one day at long time i i happy i paid visit uh, to the mission one the buddha and uh, i reported him my difficulties then he told he accepted this is the way the life this is the nature and being so he says if someone is thinking that i am healthy and it is nothing but uh, that indicate it food and they are one must train in such a way that uh, the body is such it is uh, it can be disease as all the other disadvantages which stop that all disadvantages one must maintain the mind very clear it is very healthy and uh, this was like an ambrosia it was very encouraging for me then the devil started to ask okay that is good uh, doesn't it occur to you to ask the buddha the way that how one can maintain the mind in such a healthy way uh, even though the body is inflicted with these uh, difficulties then only the at all gentleman or the householder remembered no he had no chance he has not question he has not raised this question in front of the buddha instead he says oh venerable sariputta even if such a question happened to me at home we used to walk long distance to people like you to uh, get it solved and answered so this is the situation so therefore why don't you uh, on behalf of buddha why don't you uh, try to analyze it that you may be answered for the same very question that you ask then knowing the householder's interest the venerable sariputta is uh, telling oh if it is so the householder then listen to me carefully i am going to uh, give a interpretation or uh, elucidation of the same statement then the householder uh, respect him and listen to him accordingly this particular discourse is going to uh, expand and when the sariputta is telling uh in this world there are two type of people uh, one majority are uh, asutavato putujjan he says they are not uh, trained they are not uh, listen to dhamma listen to the true teaching of the buddha or whatever may be the reality and uh, asutavato putujjan adiyanam adassavi adiyadammi akko vidu adiyadammi avinitu being un, being unheard being uninstructed uh, they never train themselves according to this higher dhamma uh, adiyadammi akko vidu uh, and those who have not seen not trained and not been skillful in this higher dhamma and on top of that they have not seen any other noble beings those who are practicing according to this dhamma they have not listened to such people they have not trained according to them under such circumstances uh, this kind of people uh, get into uh, kind of thinking this body is the soul or the soul is in the body or the soul is body or soul is the bodily thing or this possessing 
that kind of uh, soul. For so this is a kind of a tendency for the uh, untrained people, uninstructed people, those who are not acquainted with the, uh, such developed people. So being uh, associated with this kind of a uh, wrong view, you always think I am the body, body is mine. Therefore, he used to entertain this form, the body, as me or myself. And uh, this usually this kind of uh, thinking, this kind of uh, view, uh, going to accept this body as very healthy, permanent, and going to give a good uh, pleasure for me. So therefore, naturally, the mindset is to have a permanent body, a healthy body, and a beneficial kind of body. But then naturally, the forms or the body is ever changing. They are not permanent and not leading to uh, pleasure. So often, it is in between suffering and uncontrollability, ungovernability is there. So whenever such a person to observe the transient nature of the body or its suffering nature, that is the way they become sick in their mind according to their changes of the body. So therefore, you must train in a such a way not to fall into that kind of traps. That is to say that uh, form as a self or self as a possession of self or self as form or self as in the form. So these are the four ways naturally happen. So in our meditation also we must take this kind of uh, advices and analysis of our body and mind situation and to uh, analyze and be diligent and be vigilant and mindful to see are we also falling under that category of uninstructed worldings, not heard the reality and not trained and not got any benefit out of that. Or we have not any uh, association or acquaintance with such uh, noble people uh, training themselves according to this truth. Aviyana, Sapurisana, Adasavi, we have not seen them. Sapurisame Akovito, Sapurisame Avinito. We are not taking them as serious thing to consider, and we have no any discipline or uh, training according to that. If that is the case, whenever the body fallen sick or any uh, situation under ungovernable, uh, it definitely lead into the suffering and inflicting suffering. So therefore we must understand in order to get our mind healthy and get our mind into the uh, uninflicted, uninflicted way, we have to understand there are higher teachings or realities and we must take them, we must listen to them, we must take them uh, in a respectful way and we must discipline in such a way so that uh, we will not be inflicted at least at the mind level or we must associate such uh, noble beings or uh, good uh, friends and we must train ourselves and we must respect them in a, such a way that is the way we will be exposed to uh, more and more uninflicted kind of mind. So in the meditation, uh, therefore we must have this kind of exposure. One thing is to, to those people, those who have taken this kind of a noble path and we must listen to them and we must discipline according. So we, meanwhile we have to listen to the, the direct teaching of the Buddha, uh, the reality and we must uh, respect it and we must discipline accordingly 
and when that happens only we can make use these uh, changes of our body or uh, impermanent nature of our body when and where it happens in order to understand or uh, in order to testify, justify or uh, test the teachings how much it is parallel with the teaching of the uh, Buddha and uh, again we are making use of our human life we are making use of our human body when and where are possible and ultimately it will lead to the, the uh, deeper le levels of wisdom and uh, therefore uh, these meditation retreats must gear to uh, justify, justify uh, this kind of teaching. So very first and foremost thing is the misunderstandings or wrong views towards his body and later the same discourse is going to explain how much uh, of same this misunderstanding can happen with our feelings how it is happening with our perception our mental formations or fabrications or with the consciousness and whenever we do read uh, these discourses specifically on these aggregates on the uh, Khanda Samyutta and same order you can see it is starting with the form or we can say the body the corporeality that is we call the materiality and the feelings, perceptions, formations and the consciousness come under the non-materiality or names so according to the presentation of the Buddha understanding of these forms, the corporeality and the body is a good starting point and it's a grosser so therefore the beginner uh, may have uh, good access to it uh, more possible possible way with that understanding with that refinement with that mindfulness only one can slowly slowly go into the mental part material non-material part and then it is uh, practicing on a fourfold manner as feelings, perceptions, mental formations and then consciousness. So the, even in Satipatthana Sutta where the, the Buddha gives the basic uh, meditation instructions it is also starting with Kayanapasana that means contemplation on the body, on body. So in uh, morning also when we are uh, discussing about the basic instructions of meditation yeah, even uh, the mindfulness as such as a representative factor of meditation we start with the body so uh, that is because understanding of the body one's own very body uh, we can reach through our uh, worldly knowledge such as physics and health uh, medical science because a lot of information available are regarding this corporeality, the materiality, the body. Uh, partly in physics, we are dealing with uh, uh, the unconscious thing, the matter, and in the medical science, we learn uh, the beings or living beings, uh, it has uh, additional part of consciousness. So when these come into the higher order, human beings are the most evolved human, the most evolved beings and the, only the human can reflect in this way upon his or her body. And that usually we do in medical science as well as in other sciences, but even then you take the external person, second person uh, as an object of studies but in meditation itself you take your own very body and take the introvert trip 
subjective understanding in order to test this teaching of the Buddha. So the very body inflicting suffering and become weak and become bent down and leading to uh, all the inflictions is the very instrument you are using for this test. So it's very nicely put it in the Satipatthana Sutta, contemplation on the body on body. So that, that is because in our day to day life we are not using the body on this kind of quest, on this kind of experimenting. We use this as an object of a machine, object like a machine or like something to be beautified or something to be uh, any other purposes. Very rarely we reflect back on our very body to understand the, the subjective experience. So in the sitting meditation, uh, we are heavily using this body for the intensive practice of mindfulness. So this become our laboratory. And therefore the Buddha yet another in the Sutta he says the body, the living body of a length of a, a, a two meters like comprise of all the truth of suffering, <coughs> all the cause of suffering, all the liberation of suffering and the way to the liberation. So therefore, whenever someone is uh, using this body as a uh, laboratory for understanding, uh, so this is we call something spiritual, we call something religious. But meditation, the term meditation make the matter more religious, more spiritual, but uh, not necessarily a sectarianism, not necessarily limited to particular religion, limited to particular uh, spiritual group. So therefore, instead of talking of meditation, if you still reduce the thing into the simple uh, mindfulness, it is a uh, common issue, it will become a, uh, everyone's issue or human issue. One can use one own, one's own body uh, to develop the mindfulness. So then, there are two results. One thing is the world results, tangible, uh, mundane results, or secular kind of and ultimately it can lead to supramundane or transcendental part also. In America, we have been often accused the Buddhism or mindfulness is being used only for secular matters, only for worldly uh, benefits, worldly results. So therefore they don't take it very seriously, they take it for healing, cure, and uh, result-oriented kind of meditation. Maybe this is a part and parcel of the symptoms of uh, uh, development. At the beginning, you take mindfulness uh, to gain the secular, the worldly results. But this sutta also, in that sense, is directly the Buddha is presenting if you wish to be free of infliction, infliction or suffering, specifically at the mind, take this as a way, this development of mindfulness, and even though the body is sick and weak and bent down in the old day, you can keep the mind free of uh, the suffering. But definitely, even though it is uh, related to these uh, sicknesses and the old disadvantage of the old age, this is leading not only at the, the cure or healing level, it is rather towards the preventive. Prevention is better than cure. So, meditators can look 
through uh, both ways as well as get the, gain the results uh, in both ways in the, in, in the sense the so mundane and supernatural, secular and the, the spiritual and the uh, secular and the spirituality. So individual of you can decide uh, what is the way you approached, what is the way you uh, came into this and how much you expect in either way, in the secular way or in the spiritual way. But uh, you have to remember, if you keep the mindfulness as the foremost thing, definitely you are going to get the both. Measurable part is in the ethical level, in the worldly level, and that is the most popular. That's, the, that's often we publish and advertise it. But the ultimate results, that is the spiritual, the supramandate one, is not a common one, it's an individual one, one's own thing. And the whole teaching of the Buddha is not to limit at the cure and the the healing level, it is leading to the prevention. So, those who are taking this message seriously are uh, going to get the benefits from both the sides, mundane and supramundane. So, how can we relate this uh, message of the Buddha or the analysis of the Venerable Sariputta in our sitting meditation, in our development of mindfulness? How can we uh, understand or make use it in our walking meditation and further in day-to-day -day activities. Uh, for example, uh, when we, if someone is going to start or uh, with the uh, mindfulness as such to start as a beginner, he or she has to uh, make use this body itself as a tool, as a laboratory and they are sit then to try to focus the mind to the very sitting posture by observing the, uh, the body as body or contemplation on the body on body is a point where the mind come the mind come to understanding external and internal viewpoint or rather we can say the mind either introvert or extrovert. Before you taking this serious message of mindfulness uh, or rather mindfulness on the body, that means un untrained, uninstructed and not associated with the uh, normal people, naturally mind is extrovert. Is always happy to see extra thing, uh, the, uh, outside things. For example, our eye, it can, uh, I can see anything in the world except itself. I cannot see itself. For that we have to have a mirror. And the sphere, always extrovert, happy and amusing ourselves with the music and the talks and all the kind of thing and under one situation it's a given situation is it is extrovert it cannot listen to itself the ear cannot listen to its eardrum it's a common for the nose the tongue the body and the mind so whenever we are try to understand the body or to contemplate upon the body on body, uh, we for the first time under the uh, name of mindfulness try to bring it introvert, put it in focusing something inwardly. So the very first embarkation or starting is you sit comfortably and be aware of the sitting posture <clears throat> and there are you give a big object the whole sitting body or your whole form and let the mind to be here and now here now I am or here now I am sitting or just being 
that itself is something spiritual. That spirit is still, itself is a good start to understand the body as such. So that itself is a challenge for the beginner. So therefore, very difficult to keep the body symmetrical, keep the body relaxed in each and every muscle and understand or experience or entertain this relaxation. So, uh, to gain the proper balance, to proper uh, simultaneous feeling, you have to try it again and again. And then, the, just like uh, people like Naklopita, the, the main character in this sutra, when you become old, you find very difficult to uh, sit and entertain the sitting posture because of the this ailment and the uh, difficulties in the body. The early, uh, the, if you start the meditation in the earlier part, it is not the body, but the mind is very agitated. It is always extrovert, so it won't find any value of sitting and focusing into one's own body, even though it is possible. And the middle-aged people, where it is, they claim they are a lot of they are, they are, they are business or busyness. So therefore, they don't find time. Even they can understand with the mature mind. Even they can uh, sit for long time if they wish. But uh, a lot of other distractions. They day busy life. So therefore, naturally. There is no chance for it to come and be here and now. So coming and being here and now itself is a, is a good start. Each day in sitting, you must take this lesson. You must never claim as a senior meditator or a skillful meditator. Daily you must assume yourself as a uh, beginner. The success of your sitting is decided by a comfort in your sitting. So therefore, don't try to crucify yourself. Don't try to regiment yourself. Don't try to manipulate with your bodily posture. Just see the way the Buddha is sitting in his lot of posture and how relaxed. So this is a uh, we can explain it in the scientific way, we can analyze and we can reason it out, but it's a simply a simple an art. Just make yourself comfortable, relaxed, and be aware of this uh, relaxed body. And when that is happening under your very nose, you will understand. As far as you are be here and now, be here and now, the uh, mind must be free of wandering thoughts. The body must be free of unbearable pains and the surrounding must be free of distracting sounds. Agitated is always searching and seeking for explanation or go out. So before taking this seat, taking this uh, sitting posture, if you are lucky to uh, have a good session of walking meditation, how much benefits you can derive from the walking is enormous. Because after walking meditation, we we'll say about 45 to one hour, the sitting posture is quite comfortable. And uh, many or any uh, distracted thoughts happen to come, uh, would have happened during the walking meditation, and uh, the mind is prepared for the uh, city posture. And therefore, it's highly recommended to uh, have a successful sitting, have a good walking meditation, and come and see. Make yourself comfortable and even if it is going to take few minutes, no problem. It's the body is 
calm and quiet and mind is collected upon the body. And this is we, in the instruction it says, be here and now, contemplate on your sitting posture. As I mentioned in the morning, it is a kind of a loving kindness or development of friendliness with own body. Whenever we are talking about the love uh, and loving kindness, we are talking about the external, but we are not so skillful in uh, making love, making friendliness, making the flexibility with one's own body. So that is why it has to uh, take number of sittings for you to get the, uh, the maximum and the relaxation. And if that is the case, and if the mind is ready to be with here and now, without much of distractions of thoughts, or pain and sounds, then it is natural for someone to meet up with the natural breath. In uh, Ali is called Hanapana, the inverted out there, and in Sanskrit it is called Pranayana, that is the continuum of the life, or that is the uh, intrinsic nature of a living body. That's a, the bottom line. So when all the other activities ceases to exist, the seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, bodily movements, and the mental uh, mind thinking, the, whenever everything settles inwardly, and then the breath or the intrinsic character of a living being naturally uh, become obvious. If that is the case, then you are instructed to observe the natural breath. Otherwise, don't go in chasing or search of the breath. You must not have a premeditated idea in order to chase behind or search the breath. Instead, what you have to do is make the situation more conducive or facilitate the situation whereby all the other distractions are subdued and the breath come naturally. So, this is the second uh, forward step or good omen good sign that the things are happening in a natural order. And that is the point where you must make sure not to have forced breathing. Just observe the natural breathing if it is happening by its own. Now uh, you have given a good chance for your mindfulness or meditative mind to observe the body as such. Now the whole body or living body or living mechanism is reduced from the whole body to the breath. That is a good representation. And then the, if the breath is happening in its natural core, if you are to observe it, you are observing it as if an outsider. You observe very breath under your very nose, but uh, as an outsider, uh, so you are not going to get involved, this breath is me and myself is in the breath or breath is a uh, position of the self, not anything like that, you, uh, you become just a uh, distance observer, a neutral observer and uninterrupted, unassuming way. So there itself you start this art, not to recognize it with the, the body or the breath is the self or self is breathing or self is uh, have this corporeality or self possess uh, this breathing or breathing uh, is the character of self. Instead you just observe like, an, like a scientist observing something in his laboratory. So this is the way 
we are making use of the present moment, you are making use of the body, then the making use of the brain, uh, as and when it arises in its natural way, on viewpoint is the external viewpoint, so uh, getting a distance from it and observe vigilantly, diligently to see the whole breadth from the beginning to the middle to the end. So when it happens, the, if the, the sharpness of the mind, if the capacity of the mind is yielding, uh, you can see in the whole breath process, the breath body, what is the most prominent point, what is the most touching point or rubbing point, so that one pointedness and the focus will be more sharp. And they are, there is a theoretical point has to be uh, understood, that is to say, some meditators naturally, intrinsically biased to the samatha or concentration type or tranquility type. Some others have their uh, drive towards uh, insight meditation to see things as they are. The breath or mindfulness on the inner and out breath is the only object which can cater for this tranquil type as well as the inside type. The person who understand and experience the breath for the first time, that means the natural breath, still do not know even though successful meditator, whether the character type of one's own character type is more towards the concentration or tranquility or towards the insight or wisdom. But if you are lucky, if you are in the sense, if you are sharp enough to see the touching point, that's an indication your personality is more towards the Inside meditation rather than concentration type or tranquil type. So, therefore, some masters they uh, emphasize stress on the tranquility meditation or concentration. They say, Don't go in search of a touching point. If you get the just breath, that is enough. So, that you have to keep it in your mind. The understanding the, the breath as a representative phenomena of the whole body is the starting point of the meditation and you, if it is so, you are keeping both the part open, the tranquility method and the insight method. But if you, when you keep on practicing with the, the mindfulness, the gathering moment of the mindfulness, the sometimes the sharpness happens, you can see the touching point. Some people, as I mentioned in the morning, feel at the end of the nostrils or top of one's own upper lip, technically called anapanasati bhavana or mindfulness on in breath and out breath. Some other people see the lowermost part of the respiratory tract, that is the diaphragm, as the in breath happen, the abdominal movement, the rising movement. And how the outbreak happen, the abdomen will become falling, uh, that accordingly the same rhythm can see rising and falling of the abdomen. It's also another uh, prominent point uh, one can understand. In between these diaphragm and the nostrils, some may feel at the chest area, some may feel at the throat, or some may feel inside the nose at the belly, whatever may be. If it is a uh, natural prominent method, each and every such points are valid points uh, to keep mind uh, focused. So, uh, understanding the touching uh, point or rubbing point is, a, uh, is an indication that meditation is more towards the inside meditation. When these two alignments, your mind is 
not with cold, not with pain, not with sounds, but with breath. And within that also you are sharp in all. It is each and every breath. Or uh, some people say, my in breath is clear at the right no left nostril, end of the right, left, left nostril or right nostril, but out breath is not so prominent. Some may say, but out breath is very prominent, but I can't feel the in breath. So whatever may be, each and every breath, uh, you get the touching sensation at the end of the nostril, or at the rising and falling. That's a uh, one step ahead towards the uh, inside meditation. But even if you can't feel such a touching point, you are not disqualifying yourself, does not indicate you are handicapped. That means your tendency is more towards the concentration. And you just keep on, uh, keep the breath face to face, keep on meditating. And uh, if I have to take one step ahead towards the inside meditation, while you are observing the breath, not the mere breath, but together with the touch of point, uh, you can, you have a challenge, you have an exercise to practice. That is to say, can you feel the difference between in breath uh, rubbing sensation and out breath rubbing sensation? or rising mode of the abdomen or the falling mode of the abdomen. Whenever you are to experience it, as and when it happens, that needs still more attention, sharpness or quick wit to trace the difference between in breath and out breath, the difference between the rising and falling. So, when such a sharpness happens, that sharpness equally you can put into uh, walking meditation also. Can you feel touch of the right leg versus the left leg? Do you feel them as equal or similar or is there any, any tiny or sharp differences? So you have to ask the mind when and where you experience the in breath and out breath, rising and falling, left and the right foot, and whatever may be, does the mind read or experience the difference? If that is the case, then definitely. You have to understand your meditation is more towards the insight rather than concentration. So when such a thing happens that uh, when you are observing as a distance observer, I will keep on happening. For example, bodily pains or sounds or thoughts are going to happen. Then the, your path is distracted or crossed. And there you have a choice either to go to the in return outbreak or the primary object or going to the bodily pains or sounds or thoughts. Whenever such a challenge happens, your sharpness must be tested again and again. If you are considering that body is me or myself or self possess body or self as a form or self is in the form kind of thing, you will give more priority to the bodily pains than the neutral object like observing the in breath and out breath or rising and falling or left and the right leg. So that indicates how the value judgment is happens whenever uh, such a distraction happens. So this is a kind of a, a, a different system in our life, or we can say natural selection. 
theoretically we have introduced the body as body, contemplation of the body as body and we reduce that in the breath for rising and falling or in the walking meditation right leg and the left leg and when that happens it is natural to uh, come across thoughts, pain, sounds and when such a thing happens, confrontation, the mind naturally take its own decision, own likings and dislikings, show its personality, which one is uh, taking the you know, taking the attention, the primary object or the distraction. So whenever such a thing happens, challenge towards the liking and disliking is they are so therefore naturally uh, intrinsically mind may select the bodily pain or the sum or the thought so when it happens uh, that we call mind distracted the secondary object came and you lost your mindfulness your diligence and the vigilance and uh, consider this as a mishap or mistake or disadvantages or something wrong. But if you clearly and if you very sharply uh, analyze it, this happening or occurrence of the bodily pain is not an intention of you. You not created it. And then the mind is selecting of that bodily pain is also not one of your intentions. If at all any intention, it is to keep the track with the in the canal, but that is also distracted or disturbed and disappeared. So, if you are analyzing in such a way, this bodily pain happens, it is due to its own root cause and due to its own prominency, the mind selected rather than the neutral object of in return out of it and they are nothing to worry, you are nothing to agitate, you are nothing to discourage, you have to understand as it is when it happens, the uninterrupted mind, untrained mind, the mind which is not disciplined according to the, the reality, is take this defensive, naturally selected object. That is to say, the sound or the pain or the uh, bodily pain, and despising, sacrificing your primary object. So it's a happening. It is nothing to get much worried about. So take it this as a, a natural thing happening, and that is the that is the one re, that is the way we can understand how uh, ingrained in our views and values to take the body as self or self as a body and that is how this value judgments that priority is given to the bodily pain or sounds or thoughts and uh, without much worrying understanding the situation whenever that the bodily pain ceases to exist or sound is to whenever it is ceases or thoughts are Elevated, if you can bring back the mind to the primary object, the in and out of you must have to uh, value your beginner's mind. If you are assuming yourself as a, uh, I am a senior yogi, so there should not have any pains, any sounds, or any thoughts, then the arrogance happens. Or Disappointments can take place, your path will be very rugged, not smooth. Instead, if you are patient enough, uh, letting that these things also to happen, and when and they are possible, if you can bring the mind back to the primary object, you have to have an acceptance of the broader mind. Uh, as to say, you are experimenting with this idea uh, whether the body has a self or self has a body body itself is position of the body or self is in the body so <clears throat> when and where you have not introduced any primary object 
and when and where you have not heard about this mindfulness or diligence or vigilance, when and where you have not associated with this kind of people, this kind of analysis never takes place because you have not introduced any primary object. So therefore, even though mind is without any agenda, in jumping from one to the other object, you don't see any uh, unnatural thing because you are not geared yet, you are not mindful, you are not diligent. And when and we are going to introduce such a primary object, a neutral thing, then only you are going to map, you are going to understand the decision making process or natural selection or different system already inbuilt and you, unless otherwise you advise, you consider this natural selection as good, this different system as good, which sometimes you consider as myself. This is my soul. It is intrinsically happening. But now, as far as you have a primary object, mindfulness as your primary thing to develop, as you understand, this now cross each other. And what is to give the priority? So they are. You have to be very patient and let the uh, sound comes and goes, let the pain come and go, let the thought come and go. Whenever possible, maximize the time with the uh, primary object, the neutral object of inbreath and outbreath, or rising and falling, or left and the right of the uh, walking meditation. And they are. You are learning an art how to maintain the balance in tightrope walking like or how to maintain the balance of a, a foot bridge. So that is how the mindfulness is getting harder and harder, hardening process and uh, if you are going to get agitated, arrogant and then disheartened. But if you are well instructed, if you are, have a broad mind, if you are ready to uh, sympathize this uh, unmindfulness also, then you can understand each and every time uh, the distraction happen. You, if you are uh, developing the beginner's mind without much of a uh, arrogance, you can bring the mind back to the uh, primary object. You can understand the children, very young ones, they don't have perceptions, good and the bad, just and unjust. So therefore, they are working in an incessant manner. Never get discouraged. But when we assume, when you keep on uh, growing, our value adjustment, value system, and always uh, going to make a decision, and therefore we have a very sharp understanding of the good and the bad, the pain and the pleasure, just and unjust. And therefore, whenever something happens, the judge judgmental mind, the uh, decision making is rushing towards ultimately the, that very process uh, becoming uncontrollable. So this understanding very thing is uh, going very deep rooted to this idea of self and the form of body and the form and the body and the soul and if you are going to uh, see relationships or if you are going to believe, if you are going to see, you can understand each and everything is crossing the path and then ultimately uh, the uncontrollability happens. So therefore, at the beginning, even though you are not completely uh, skillful in Getting rid of this idea is idea of such as the form is not necessary. Self is not without a form and self is not possessing a form. Self is not in the form. Uh, that is the theoretical maximum for the moment. But when and where this kind of a distraction happen, you can understand how that kind of a uh, inbuilt value system is happening. It's coming to be. And there you have to be very, very observant. While observing only, you can understand 
these things, this the way it happens whenever such a uh, phenomena going to take place. So they are observe it from a distance or just a, a distance observer's point of view without a valid judgment, in a non judgmental way. Right from the beginning, it is a attribute, these are the attributions of the mindfulness. So you have to understand whenever the mindfulness is when the mind if the mindfulness is to be continuous, the judgmental mind or involved mind always become arrogant and leading to disappointments. These are the mental sicknesses. They have depression and uh, discouragement, fault finding. So these are the mental sicknesses. So our mind, the human mind, have the capacity uh, to understand as and when, when and where these kind of mental impressions going to happen. That is not uh, uh, not the situation of the beginner's mind. The beginner's mindfulness. Now, at the beginning of the mindfulness, don't have that kind of uh, capacity. So therefore, once the momentum gathered, once the mindfulness uh, hit a fairly good footings, uh, then this distance observation become more and more sharp. So at the beginning you have to be very patient. That's why it says the gathering of the momentum at the early part of mindfulness is painfully slow. It's more true to the beginners. But even the advanced yogis must have this uh, beginner's mind. The concept of beginner's mind, therefore, less and less chances for the discouragement, but in some way you can apply again and again, and they are one day you can understand if you are to reach the final aim, final goal of uh, understanding this uh, body is not the self, self is not having a corporeality of body, uh, that kind of thing, uh, the mental frame or mental preparation at the theoretical level at the beginning is very important. I am giving a more biased kind of an explanation or kind of a uh, instructions toward the vipassana meditation or inside meditation and uh, in order to compensate it if I am to say something about the concentration meditation at the concentration meditation whenever you are uh, trying to maximize the time with the in-breath and out-breath uh, there are the sounds can happen the pain can happen the thought can happen you take uh, the concentration kind of techniques in order to get rid of these distractions. They are not, they, one can say they are not valid to the inside, they are valid to the inside meditation also. If you have, uh, for example, uh, thoughts full of desire and they are, uh, it never take the take delight of the primary object because it is more neutral. So therefore, the thoughts about uh, desire, or craving, or the body the pleasure, they become possessed. If it is so, uh, one can understand the, the disadvantages of this uh, crazy mind or craving mind. You have to develop kind of a uh, repulsivity of the body and uh, a special antidote for this uh, desire and if the mind is more towards the uh, hatred, towards your bodily feeling or thoughts or sounds, then you have to develop loving kindness in order to compensate. These are the, the concentration methods, some of the methods. So they are likewise that each and every distraction, there are few guardian meditations to compensate it. But in the Vipassana meditation, if you have them, it is advantageous even without that kind of already developed uh, guardian meditation, just by observing, just developing the mindfulness and the diligence, uh, you become better off uh, 
with time to come given that the beginning is painfully slow and the mindfulness going to become beneficial once it gathers the momentum so therefore at the early part it's a heavy investment so each day you will be slowly 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 uh, harden your mindfulness and then once uh, you develop your ability to maintain the uh, relationship with so, uh, mindfulness with the primary object but with such little distractions then only the gathering the momentum going to take place or so more and more time you can keep with uh, in breath and out breath or your primary object face to face with the not in mind and then uh, that is uh, becoming a good sign of the uh, maturity of the mindfulness so they are you have to uh, alternative way to walk in meditation and sitting and keep the other time of uh, day of the day in a retreat uh, with less, less interactions so that's why it says don't talk with others or with the unwanted uh, things and uh, don't worry about the what the others are talking about because your aim is to develop the and establish the mindfulness and allocate time as much as possible in uh, walking and sitting and whenever other things happen you are involved in the other day to day activities try to do them in a little slow manner so that less and less amount of objects and more and more amount of mindfulness and you determine mindfulness together with the purpose and you uh, do it in a very silent way listening to your own sounds to become more and more self conscious so they are to <clears throat> reduce as much as possible the distraction so this is how the intensive meditation like sitting and semi intensive walking and the extensive uh, going to harness each other and then not be you feel like uh, yogi or a meditator so at the early few days you may find difficulties to cope up with the time and table and cope up with this uh, different way of life so you have to be patient and continue by continuing with the time you can keep with face to face with the primary object that we will be the uh, first and foremost criterion to see whether you are progressing whether you are developing the mindfulness so emphasizing that means more to the sitting meditation and uh, getting the the pure type of mindfulness the intensive type of mindfulness and ultimately uh, spreading it to the walking and day to day activities and uh, when we are go further and further we may take time and uh, explanation towards the how to deal with these uh, feelings and how Uh, perceptions come into being and how can we deal with them and the pollutions the wind the fabrications how it happens and how can we incorporate it in meditation and the consciousness so leaving this for in future talks today i will sum up at that level hoping this set of information help you more and more mindful and to make you the maximum of this retreat time thank you very much for this break and then uh, from then walking meditation uh, sorry uh, yes six to seven walking meditation and uh, if you all have time uh, seven to eight we can go for another city uh, uh, the changes we made to the time table and so that we may have about uh, eight full hours uh, sorry four full hours of walking meditation and some around 3 to 3 and half hour onward we will uh, adhere to the time table already uh, presented uh, if clarification necessary or any 
immediate question on this uh, talk, then I can take a few minutes uh, for the otherwise we'll take. Yeah. It is happening only due to meditation or except other times also you will feel it. Question is, does it happen even in other day-to-day -day activities also away from your city, meditative city? Accept it is uh, something related with your meditation. So it's a good sign, and it's a result of your meditation, part and parcel. So they are you have to uh, you observe it, and uh, whenever the uh, sometimes the mind is with the breath, sometimes it's a basically with the pain. So whenever the pain become unbearable or prominent beyond the threshold value, the mind takes that attention, leaving behind the uh, in-breath and out -breath. And uh, after pain come up to a certain level, you can't do it. Your mind is basically going to the pain, back to right there, in-breath and out -breath. And uh, as far as it is above level, and mind is almost with the pain, because it is distracting, and when the pain ceases to exist beyond certain level, it becoming not prominent and again you get the chance to go to the in breath and out breath. So there you have to understand that the pain becomes problematic beyond a certain threshold value. And below there, there may be pain but it is not distracting. Still you can be with the in breath and out breath. So whenever mindfulness is sharp, you must understand where are the starting point of the pain, how it starts from the no pain to pain. No pain time also, there is a kind of a pain, it is under the surface level, it has not come beyond the threshold value. So the no pain becomes pain, there yeah, if you can if you can trace that point, the beginning what people have called it, the starting part of the pain. And because it's happening as a wave, so it is. So if, the, if you are Managing to see the beginning part, your sharpness is equally helpful you to see the cessation part of the pain also. You keep the breath as the primary object and whenever the pain becomes unbearable level or beyond the threshold value, no, don't develop any kind of a negative feeling or to wipe it off or as an enemy. Instead, you try to understand the beginning, the middle and the end of the pain. And that pain also has its own characters, uh, the piercing kind, the burning kind, the twisting kind, or stabbing in one particular point or different points, sometimes moving here and there. All are we call the natural characteristics of the pain. So keeping the primary object at the canvas, you have to see the painting of pain. What are the nature? What are the characteristics? What are the, the how it the beginning, the middle, and the end. So, when and where possible. And uh, don't think it as a negative thing. Uh, if as far as you are considered as a negative or destructive, you will never uh, be welcoming to see the beginning of the pain. So, therefore, in order to see the beginning of the pain with uncolored mind, take it as an object of meditation as far as pain is prominent, the beginning. And once you develop a certain amount of skillfulness in the bodily, mindfulness on the body as body, the second invariable visitor is the pain, the feeling. The so feeling is after 15 to 20 minutes time, everyone is, is experiencing one kind of one or the other kind of pain. So they are, uh, instead of antagonizing, Try to see the basic, the beginning, the middle, and the end of the pain. Other one is the natural characteristics of the pain. What kind of a pain? It's a burning, stabbing, all the kind of things. So they are you can you develop a certain amount of uh, forbearance, kind of a anonymous uh, idea. And they are midst of pain. Sometimes you manage to see pain is very close and excruciating, but this. Still, you can see the in-breath and out-breath. And sometimes it becomes 
in the tenor that is very close and behind that drum viharas have pains representing the same but it is not so permanent below the threshold value so likewise when it is changing you can understand the breath sometimes close pain is distance sometimes the breath pain is close the breath is at the distance so this is the way you can see different facets in their interaction you can see different facets and each and every one the breath and the pain must be uh, how to say must not be a conceptual one it must be really happening if it is so you are advancing slowly slowly and if it's a conceptual one <coughs> happening through the mind when you observe in the beginning and the middle and the end they disappear very quickly but if it's a real pain you can grapple with the, the deal with them and understand Two things that the nature of the pain, as well as it is something happening due to its own due course. So it is really meditation, really under your very nose. So therefore, more and more you understand uh, your immunity, your forbearance uh, is developing. That means your personality becomes stronger and stronger. So don't consider it as an enemy. Take it as a good exercise or good question there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get your question. Sutras. Uh, Sutras. Yeah, it is uh, the, the first one is Nakula Pita. Nakula Pita is the, the father of Nakula. Nakula's father. That is Nakula Pita. It is the Pali term. Uh, that is you find in the Samyutta Nikai. They hold the concise uh, discourses. Sanyutta Nikaya. And Sanyutta Nikaya is a huge one. You have 7,000 or suttas. This is in the Khanda Sanyutta. Pardon me? Uh, yeah. And uh, if you are referring to Bhikkhu, uh, you are, if you are referring to Bhikkhu Bodhi's book, it's very famous now. Sanyutta Nikaya. Uh, I can give you the page now. So that will be helpful. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you have chapter Sandrana CD uh, issued by the VRI, so that is also I can help you to get it with the Pali. Uh, and the Bhikkhu Bodhi is one is a translation. And if you use the Pali with the Roman characters, that's also available in the, in the electronic form. And the second one is the Satipatthana Sutta. It's a very famous one. Uh, it's a full of instructions regarding the meditation. Yes. Satipatthana, it's called for foundation of mindfulness. I recommend Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll meet it with, uh, here at 7 o'clock for another city. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.